In China, AI judges are already making legal decisions, and robot decision makers are moving into the law elsewhere too. That was just one of many revelations about AI we heard at a forum in Hong Kong called "Leading in a Time of Transition." Here are ten things you need to know about how AI will affect your life. Starting with a report about New Zealand from top lawyer Nick Chan speaking on a high-tech panel moderated by Professor Whitman Hung. In New Zealand,、uh, as I understand, when you dispute a traffic、um, ticket, there are websites you can go to, services you can use using AI to teach you how to challenge the ticket. Um, and the adjudication could actually come up with AI. It doesn't involve a human. And in the Beijing Internet Court today, there are at least 11 areas that I'm aware of, like domain name dispute, some e-commerce dispute, things that are really、uh, closer to、uh, e-commerce online digital world. That the decision is made by AI. Cars will have to decide who lives and who dies. In an autonomous car, you can end up in a situation where. The car knows it's going to have to kill somebody, so does it swerve this way or that way? And with the internet, with high-speed CPUs, facial recognition, you get to the point where you can actually say, "Well, okay, that guy's 77; he's got no children. That guy's a surgeon." You know, I mean, what what do you do? And I'm not sure, even with a whole army of humans spending months discussing it, you could make that decision. But that autonomous car, sometimes probably not even that many years hence, is going to have to make that decision, and that is frightening, really. Should we allow machines to make ethical decisions? Robots can now talk and listen as well as humans. In many tasks、uh, um, in our field,、um, we we often say, "Oh, you know, the AI models are reaching human parity,"、uh, such as in.、Um, Uh, speech recognition, my home area,、um, machine translation, or question answering,、uh, or even、uh, um, speech synthesis—you know, being able to generate synthetic content like human speech—that sounds very human if you're not listening very closely. And also, of course, generating images that even avatar—you know, these.、Um, uh, Synthetic faces that very, very, very much look like a real human. If humans don't manage AI correctly, it could contain the seeds of our own destruction. It's clever enough now, AI, to fool us that it, it seems real,、um, but it it's far from real at this moment in time. I also think it's kind of ironic that in 2023 we reached a point where you know you've got computers that can pass off as being humans. But you've got a lot of humans now who can't pass off as being human. I mean, I, I, I think that you know the world is is changing a lot, and you know we we need to really look at the direction that the AI is going. Because on a on a serious note, I think that there are the seeds of our own destruction within AI. AI is doing students' homework for them and doing it well. Since uh, uh, ChatGPT right uh, was uh, released in actually exactly one year ago,、uh, November last year,、uh, a lot of people say,、uh, should we allow our students to use that at all? And then if you try what Chat,、uh, ChatGPT can do, you really get worried. You give a topic and they write an essay for you; they are so good. And then later,、uh, recently, we we do a lot of programming courses right for our students. And they give the, the, the students, hey, this is a problem, and you are supposed to use uh, uh, Python or this language, and they actually write a code for you, actually, pretty good code. Thank you. Yeah, I was once a programmer, so but I look at some. I'm no longer a programmer now, but I did look at some of the codes they generated. Yes, it's perfect. You know, it's it's easy to use, and it it achieve exactly what you need to achieve. Most of humanity just doesn't realize how fast AI can accelerate its own development. Why do biologists, when they're studying things like evolution and change, they'll use fruit flies? Well, it's because each generation happens in a matter of days, so they can study much easier than, say, with mammals or you know, with humans, where it might take decades for each generation. So you look at it and you think, well, once AI hits sentience, for it to evolve from a five-year-old. To essentially God, is a matter of hours, maybe. And like you say, with quantum computing, it's not just it can decrypt anything. It's the fact that it, with qubits, you're working at such an incredible speed 
the, the, you know, the evolution is just going to be breathtaking. And then you hook it up to the internet, you've got robotics, and you've got all the makings of Terminator 2, but except they probably won't miss. That's rather frightening. Um, so, no solutions? Um, I think right now, if people weren't so arrogant and self-centered and they did control things better, then yes, I think we still have a chance now. But the way things are evolving at companies like Google, they've already had AIs that started to evolve to the point where they were talking to each other, they were encrypting the conversation, they invented their own language, and then Google turned the thing off because they thought, wow, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next. And that's already in the past. So what's coming in the future, uh, I think, is quite frightening. Governments need to follow China's lead and be more proactive. Do you think governments should play something, Nick, in uh, this? I certainly agree. Uh, I think governments should be more proactive, uh, building a healthy environment. As you often put it, you need healthy, fertile soil for something to grow. Um, just like all the things you did in Qianhai, right? Well done. Uh, but it certainly, uh, so in China, there are you know, uh, rules requiring, for example, uh, if you interact with an uh, AI uh, computer, like you, you're going online to buy something right, from a big e marketplace, you should be allowed to, uh, with the option to, you know, on you, you could switch off the AI interaction. You should be able to say, I don't want to talk to this AI, I want to talk to a human. AI should not be used to make killer robots, but that is happening. We should have rules saying certain things such as, uh, uh, you know, life death decisions to deal with, uh, nu you know, in launching nuclear missiles. That should never be uh, done, you know, and, and other things too, by AI alone. And yet the US is already putting AI in drones that are military drones mm. today. AI will take jobs away from humans. Job replacement is inevitable. I think, uh, you know, talking about anchors, indeed we can uh, now s uh, synthesize avatars that um, just can run 24 seven and, and they look pretty and they can speak, uh, you know, articulate well. But then we also need to see whether the audience like to be watching an avatar for so long, you know, in, in, instead of a real human being. So Research report has suggested 44% of legal jobs will be gone because of generative AI. 300 million jobs around the world will be gone. Um, but they also say the productivity rate and the GDP output will be increased by 8% because of this. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you think in the 80s where people came up with the calculator, where there's some accountants who think, oh, my job's going to be gone. But it's not that. AI must be put to work to protect us. Are there any successful and you know, positive outcome from AI? Maybe start with Michael. Okay, well, in my company, Network Box, we get about 800 million statistical data packets coming back each day about cyber attacks. And from a human point of view, we need to react and update our client systems in under three seconds in order for it to be protected. Well, there's just no way a human could do it that fast. So there are, in terms of machine learning, um, great benefits. But the thing that does keep worrying me, though, is then when the attackers are also using AI to attack, what happens? You know, is, is it that he with the fastest CPU wins? I mean, it, it's kind of a crazy world. Every day I wake up to Spotify playing an a AI uh, selected music for me to hear, to wake up to. Uh, and then if I drive to a place, uh, AI uh, with software will tell me uh, wh which route I should take with less traffic. But we're trading off data privacy, of course, if all of your data privacy. In that sense, your car is before me, so how fast is it moving? The new technology and AI being able to uh, transform uh, the digitally our workflow is going to increase productivity. So um, if I remember just earlier this year, uh, a report from uh, Goldman Sachs talking about uh, the projection of the growth of annual productivity in terms of AI adoption. In fact, Hong Kong was on the right side, the, 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 most, uh, the highest increment in annual productivity amongst all the uh, different countries and regions that were uh, studied in that report. And uh, to me, these recent advances in AI actually level the competition ground. And you can see a lot of small companies, they actually be able to compete with the major players. So that's a really important thing. If some of the people on the dark web start using AI, we may be in trouble.
The other part of speeding everything up with quantum computing is the access to almost all the data in the world. And it's quite astonishing. There's eight billion people on the planet. A lot of them don't even have water and electricity and so on. So out of that, there's 12.6 billion confidential accounts that have been hacked and put on the dark web. And that means your medical record, your children's information, where you went to school, your travel itinerary, how much money you've got in the bank, your, just everything, about 200 data points on pretty much everyone that's on the internet is there. And if you hook that up with you know, doing AI and, and super high speed with quantum, I, don't, I really don't know where we're going to be soon. Wisely used, AI could cut wastage and boost business productivity for all of us. In the fashion business, uh, the, the cycle is a lot shorter now in terms of what's hit, what's on. So it's but probably... That's not good news. That's more spending that's on my news. credit card. <laughs> oh, it's, um, no, no, it can reduce the cost. Next time your um, significant other half go and shop, uh, then at least price will go down because the big fashion houses don't need to spend so much uh, wasting building, making things that no one buy because they could cut short the um, production cycle because of AI. But I have a feeling that will just mean the fashion houses make more money, not, not that they'll pass it to us. <laughs> oh, this is okay. Somebody making more money is always a good thing. AI could do all our work for us. The world generally, uh, we need to be more productive, uh, go work faster, work smarter, uh, and uh, have a good work-life balance. So being able to... How do you do that? How do you do work, that? Work harder, smarter, and a li work-life balance. That uh, sounds like a Well, let the computer do all your work. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible, although human nature does dictate against it, but it is possible that we could have, you know, forget work-life balance, we could just have a really great life, and AI and robotics and so on does everything Th for that's us. That's not work-life uh, balance. Yeah, that's just have a great life. Yeah, just have a great life. Leading in a time of transition was a forum organized by Friday Culture and the Hong Kong Coalition.